this is the 15th day of the fifth month. And it's a Sabbath. We are in the Sabbath fully, so we say welcome everybody, welcome and happy Sabbath. As, as Paul speaks about, he starts with our forefathers. He starts by saying, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, right? And, and then he just lists all the faithful throughout all the ages. He just lists them all the way down, right? So we're in, Roma, in, in Hebrews 11, and he lists all the faithful people. And then when he gets to the bottom of this, he says, he talks about them, and he says, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in the caves of the earth. All these, these and these all, all these people that he mentioned from, from mm -hmm. Abel, these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better things for us who are alive. That they, who is the they? All these people that he mentioned before, without us, should not be made perfect. Now, Paul is saying this at the end of the Day of Atonement in the Antitype. Because if you, if you go back to the chapter before this, chapter 10, let's go back. Paul is talking about the sacrifice and the sanctuary service and the Day of Atonement. Now, I said before, and a lot of people um, I know are not aware of this, but the entire book of Hebrews is about the, the type and the antitype in the sanctuary service. The entire book of e Hebrew. That's what it's about. What is it about? The, Could you repeat that? It's about the type and the antitype of the sanctuary service. You remember last last week we were here and um, and I have a uh, let me see if I still have it up here. Yeah, I have it up here. Remember last week we talked about this. If you're looking at your screen, remember. Mm-hmm. We talk about the tabernacle and the sanctuary services, which, by the way, today's lesson is a part of that. And this year is what this year that our four parents were practicing day in and day out. We were practicing a prophecy. We were rehearsing the righteous act. We were practicing this prophecy that should be fulfilled in the lives of the Hebrew Israelites in the real. All these things that we were doing here in type were to be fulfilled in, in the real. And the services spanned from the spring of the year, the beginning of the year, unto the fall of the year. And there are seven main services that occur in this setting. And they represent, these services represent what will happen in the lives of the Hebrew Israelites in the real. Mm -hmm. They were done in shadow. All right? Now, what I'm saying is that when you are reading the book of Hebrews, if you open your Bible and you're reading the book of Hebrews from, the, from Hebrews 1 and verse 1, all the way on to Hebrews, I think it's 12 chapters. Let me see. It's 12 chapters. No, 13 chapters. So from Hebrews 1 and verse 1 to Hebrews 13 and the last verse, what Paul is talking about is this, is this, both in shadow and in the real. That's what he's talking about in the book of Hebrews. And bringing, and the bringing in, the bringing in of the new covenant experience in the lives of the Israelites. What is the new covenant experience in the lives of the Israelites? It is the ending of sin. It is the finishing of the work of sin. 
to make the living Hebrew Israelites sinless while on this earth before the second advent. That's what this, this, these services, the, the, the uh, feast days, the daily sacrifices, and the Day of Atonement represent. Now, if we do not accomplish this, there is no going to no heaven. So, there must be a final generation of Hebrew Israelites who are awake, who are repentant, and I'm, I believe that that is us here, uh, 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 Judah the Hebrew. That's what I believe, it's us. Following the laws, statutes, and commandments that the Heavenly Father has given us through the Holy Spirit, and observing these feast days on the days on which they would have occurred. Why? Because the final atonement, the day of atonement in the real is going to occur. And Hebrews 11 and this verse that we just read apply to us. This last verse, God having provided some better things for us. What is the better thing that he has provided for us? The day of atonement in the real. Because if we are not made perfect, none of these people from Abel will come back into the kingdom. None of these people. And all Israel will never be saved. This is what Paul is talking about. So as you go back, and we're going to do these lessons, and you're going to see it. If we go back from um, chapter 11, and we go to chapter 10, what do you see Paul talking about? For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the thing, can never by those sacrifices which offered year by year continually make the comers dear unto perfect. What do you think he's talking about? This. This. And, and he's specifically talking about the Day of Atonement, because when he says yearly, the yearly sacrifices, it is the, it is the Day of Atonement, which the high priest performed. And Paul is saying that, that these yearly sacrifices on the Day of Atonement could not make the people perfect under the, the, the earthly priesthood and, and Aaron's sons being high priest. So what is going to accomplish it? Yahweh Shai in the real. Remember, there was, a, there was a copy. This one that we're looking at here is a copy of the one in heaven. And Aaron and his sons represented the high priests, the high priesthood. And they do one thing only. They do the yearly. And they represent Yahweh Shai being high priest. So if these earthly priests ministry yearly could not make us perfect and we know it never make us perfect because we're still not perfect till this day if that could not make us perfect then what is going to make us perfect yahawashah's ministry in the heavenly on the day of atonement is going to fulfill it so unless we Unless we receive this better ministry and the writing of the laws in our hearts on the Day of Atonement, under the New Covenant, then they without us cannot be made perfect. Now, who is the they that, who is the they that he's talking about? When Yahweh comes, the dead in Christ shall arise incorruptible. This is how they get their incorruption by us being perfect. Because they cannot be raised from the dead incorruptible, and we are still corrupt. And we both be got up together with him in the cloud. That is impossible. So something has to happen in the life of the living Hebrew Israelite, which qualifies him to be caught up with those that are risen from the dead incorruptible. But those who are to be caught up from the dead incorruptible cannot be made perfect without the living Hebrew Israelite experience in the Day of Atonement in the real.
And I keep talking about this, you know, because this is a message that the Heavenly Father gave me with a perfect understanding. And I don't know if, uh, I don't know how, you know, if it's been communicated to us. And this is the reason I do these lessons yearly over and over again. Because this is of utmost importance. No standing on the street side cursing white people or doing any other stuff and talking about fringes is going to get us into the kingdom. This is it. This is how all Israel shall be saved. Because Yahweh made a promise Let me go to it. Let me go to, um, and this is just purely by the spirit, you know. This is just purely by the spirit because you, you raised the question. Um, and nothing will click. Yahweh, please make it work. Nothing will click. You see, it's not clicking. All right. Let's see if I can find it. Um, uh, let's start at, let's start at, we're going to start verse 16. Um, no, no, to Abraham, to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. You hear that? Mm -hmm. To Abraham and to his seed were the promises in plural made. And, and, and Romans 9 also says that, that it is to the Israelites to whom pertain the, the promises. There is no promise that was made to any other nation but to Abraham and his seed. And the seed that it is talking about is Isaac. And from Isaac repeated to Jacob and his 12 and no one else. No one else. And I don't care what the Christian church talk about, no Gentiles. It's not them. The Gentiles are the Israelites of, um, you know, in a Gentile state of mind and who were falling off. So to Abraham and his seed was the promises in plural made. What are the promises? Eternal life, sinless perfection, immortal bodies, spiritual powers, resurrection from the dead, the laws written in our hearts, um, and the kingdom, the kingdom, the rulership of the entire earth, and the land. That's it. Okay. He says not and to seeds as in many, but as one. And to thy seed, Yahweh said, which is Christ. Now remember, we talk about that. What, who is the seed? Isaac. Remember, we talk about Isaac is a type of Yahweh Shai. Isaac is that seed because Abraham had Ishmael before and eight others after that. And it never include any of them, but one. That is the one. And through that one, it was repeated to Jacob and to Jacob the 12 and nobody else. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, which is the anointed, which was Isaac first, the law which was 430 years afterwards, when did we get the law? When we came out of Egypt. What was the promise made to Abraham before he had anybody? Paul is saying that this covenant and this promise, which was made 430 years before the law, cannot be disannulled. That it should be, that it should make the promise of non-effect. The law cannot come 400 years later and this is all the promise. So what was the promise? Let's go back up. All the promises. We have to understand this fundamental principle, this fundamental issue. That Yahweh made a promise that you cannot, first of all, you cannot share promises. And Paul is going to say it. Paul is going to say, this is why it is a promise. No, unless Yahweh went and made the same promises to the pagan nations, it cannot apply to them. And it doesn't matter how much they believe in Moses or believe in Abraham 
or believe in Yahweh Shai, Yahweh never promised them the promise. So what is that promise? For, listen, for, for if the inheritance be of the law, what is the inheritance, the promise, the covenant, this, these that he made to Abraham and to his seed, one, Isaac, repeated to Jacob and the 12 tribes. This inheritance is not by the law. It is of promise. Paul says it, it is no more of promise. If it were by the law, then this is no more promise. But God gave it to Abraham by a promise. There it is. So Paul says, so why then serve the law? It was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Who is that? Yahweh Shai. Because he, it is through him that we are going to be made perfect. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but Yahweh is one. And this was my opening scripture, by the way. Is the law then against the promise of God? No, God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded that we're all under sin, that the promise by faith in Yahweh Shia Mashiach might be given to them that believe. Of who? Go back up the seed of Abraham. We must always remember we're reading in context. If the promise is made here, then this is talking about the people to whom the promise was made. But before, I'm sorry, not that one, this one. Oh, no, I've done that. Verse 23, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. By the way, family, who is the we? The con Israel, yes, yes. It has nothing to do with no, no Gentiles. It's the Israelites. All these things, he's not talking to no Gentiles. This is a family affair and a promise mm -hmm. that the neighbors next door can't come stick their heads through the window and say, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, good, good. We, we, want, we want some. You ain't getting none. This is not for you. And, the, and, and what we just read in, in Hebrews 11, the last verse that says, they without us. The us is the Israelites. The people that are that have that, that Paul is speaking about in Romans 11, not not Romans 11, I'm sorry, in Hebrews 11, those people that have gone before us, those people are dependent on the Hebrew Israelites to, to receive perfection. They're not dependent on no, the Moabites and those people. And the scripture makes it clear that the whole creation is waiting on us, our restoration. Who is the us? The Hebrew Israelites. Them. All right. So it says that is verse 23. We were kept under the law. Who was under the law? We the Hebrew Israelites. Shut up. Unto the faith we should afterwards be revealed. Who is that? Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Yahweh Shai, that we might be justified by faith. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Mm. Yeah. What law, what law is it that was set up as the, as the schoolmaster to bring us to Yahweh Shai? What law is that? It is the law that is played out here every single day. This one. Because remember, all this is a prefiguring of Yahweh Shai. This is what he's talking about. This sacrificial system was given to us to bring us to Yahweh Shai, who would bring perfection to us. 
But this is it playing out in type, day in and day out. Let me read one more verse. But after Yahweh Shai has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. We are no longer under this. That's why you see us not going out there killing anything. So when he says that we're no longer under the law, he's not talking about the Ten Commandments or the Sabbath law like the Christian church says they're done away with. He's not talking about that. He's talking about this. Because now we're doing all this by faith in his sacrifice because he is the one that laid on this altar and gave his, himself for us that we don't have to do this anymore, but now we believe this is the faith that has come. And through through that faith, we receive the benefits of the things that are performed in here. Let me make it bigger so we can see it. We receive the benefits of what happens in here. In the real. This was done in the type. So what happened in here in the type? We're going to talk about it. And then we're going to, at our next lesson, Yahweh willing that I have a good machine. We're going to talk about what happens inside here behind the veil in the most holy. All right. This is what the whole thing is about to bring perfection to us. Why? So that all Israel shall be saved. Now, um, let's. Let me take Brother Daniel. Go ahead. Go ahead, my brother. I see you. Um, so, so basically when Paul says, for ye are not under the law, but ye are under grace. So he's basically saying, we're not, we no more under the law of animal sacrifice because yes. Christ came as the slain lamb. Yes. 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 Okay. And the grace, yes. And the grace that he gave us that you remember now, remember that there are certain laws that if you violate those laws you're put to death yes like for example how many times have we um not been able to keep the sabbath because of whatever happened right or we went out picking up sticks like that man you'll be put to death in fact there's a law that says whosoever shall violate the sabbath must be put to death so yeah so why why is it that we don't drop drop dead somebody had asked me that if y'all are keeping the law then you should drop dead when you when you break it because there's grace that is why we didn't drop dead because yeah how shy is the grace go ahead go ahead brother yeah wouldn't that be considered a uh judgmental law yes if if if, if you can if you're not allowed to stone people anymore for sinning yeah, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, but remember now that that law is the judgment. Um, but the law doesn't, the the law does not is not abolished. What what is a what is what is given is chance to repent. That's what grace is. Grace is a chance to repent. And but yeah, but 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 it doesn't it doesn't um. It does not nullify the law. It doesn't. It doesn't remove the law. Oh yeah, it, I understand that. Yes, it, yes. It, it just extends the, yeah. the point. Yeah, it just it just defers the punishment that you might repent and not be punished. Yeah. All right. Thank. Thank you. Thank you for that, Vanessa. Go ahead, please. Vanessa. The, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to unmute. Um, okay. The 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 diagram that we're looking at, it's in the Old Testament, like with the curtain and only the holiest of the holy of holies, the priest would go and make the animal sacrifice for our sins. And then when you go to Genesis 15 in the Old Testament, God had already um, spoke about Jesus Christ to come and stand for us because we could not, like this didn't work, the following of the 10 commandments didn't work and only Jesus Christ worked for us. So when he made the covenant and the promise with Abraham, it was um, it was the beginning um, of him fulfilling what was predicted in the Old Testament that Jesus Christ would come and be the savior for us. 
Um, and the answer to that is basically yes. Yes. So when we look at John 3, 16, um, it's, it's, if, if, if he says that whosoever believes in Jesus Christ shall be saved. So um, at that moment when my grandfather, maybe he didn't go to church and maybe he didn't practice all the things that, you know, he didn't go to church and, you know, he didn't do all of the right things. But on his deathbed, if he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, that made him saved. No. Um, so your grandfather is uh, is a Hebrew Israelite. He was a Christian at like, well, not really a Christian, but at the end on his like before he passed away, uh -huh. um, he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So when I look at John 3, 16, it says if whomsoever believe in Jesus Christ shall be saved. Mm -hmm. So I get like he didn't walk that walk every day. He didn't, you know, follow, do what he was supposed to do because the Holy, after Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit came to perfect us. And if we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're saved. And so when you look at the Ten Commandments and the commandments that Jesus gave when he walked on earth, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. Love your neighbors as yourself. It was a little different, but it was all about love. But the top of that was, is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's how, I, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So that's the Christian version of the, of, of, um, of uh, salvation, right? Um, the but it doesn't it it it's um, it's specific to the Hebrew Israelites, um, and the law is not just love your neighbor. It is keeping the 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 sick the because remember Yahweh said, all these laws are, are hanged on love. So you cannot love your brother and break any of the laws. Oh it's no, important. you cannot accept oh no, I agree. You cannot right, so. accept John 316 and live any kind of way you want to live. No, right, I, but, agree. I agree. I agree because we represent we should represent Jesus Christ and he is holy. I agree. Right. So that and that means keeping all this the 613 laws. There there is no well, I'm in Jesus. Therefore, I don't have to keep the Sabbath, or I am in Jesus, so he blessed all food, and so it's now clean. There's none of that. These laws that are given are given to be kept in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and that's, that is what we're saying, that we have to keep all these laws. We cannot, we, can, we cannot say love, substitute them, because, or, or they are substituted by love, because, because love, the keeping of the laws is a demonstration of love. You know, it's, uh, we, we always talk about it in, in the sense of um, a relationship between a man and a woman. And he says, oh, I love you so much. And then he's doing all the horrible things to you. But he's touting love every day. Makes no sense, right? Well, it's the same way. We cannot say we love God and we're not keeping his laws. Nor can we say we love our fellow men and violate the laws that pertain to our fellow men. And where are those laws found? 613. They have not gone away and they have not changed. And so that's the difference between what we teach and what the, the Christian church teaches. Another thing also that we teach, um, in, that we specifically teach is what I'm just reading here in Galatians that this promise that you're talking about, and you said from Genesis, I think you said Genesis, did you say Genesis 15? I think you said. Uh, yes, Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15. That's yeah. the Old Testament. That's God um, first, uh, well, to me, the first proclamation that he was gonna send Jesus Christ um, right. to defeat Satan. Right, okay. All right, so, so and, and we are in agreement there. Now that promise was made to this, the righteous seed. This is, and, and then, but remember now, we remember that, that Yahweh destroyed all of that first world. 
And no, we, he started over after the arc with the three boys, Shem, Ham, and Japhet, and so on, right? So how is that promise fulfilled? It is fulfilled through Shem, through Abraham, through Isaac, through Jacob, through the 12 patriarchs, and their seed forever. Remember, when he said, thy seed, he said to the woman, your descendants, Shall, shall be one righteous bloodline, and there's going to be another bloodline, which is the devil, the evil one. We, we should always remember that it is a, the, the covenant is specific to the, to the genealogy of the righteous. Now, where is that genealogy of the righteous? Um, as we get to Abraham, you see, you see the promise. This is why we are here in Galatians. But this promise that we're talking about in Galatians is that Old Testament promise confirmed in Abraham. It says the promise, God made him made Abraham a promise to his seed. Right? And that seed was to Isaac, and it was repeated to Jacob and the twelve, and it was never promised to anyone else. So when we are here. We see Paul talking about the same thing again. If my, okay, it will click, okay. We see Paul again here talking about the promise. And he says that, he says that the promise, he says, Paul says, for I wish myself were cursed from Yahawashai for my brethren, for my kinsmen according to the flesh. Now your kinsmen according to the flesh are the descendants of Jacob who are Israelites, he confirms it right there, he confirms it, to whom pertaineth the adoption. So the adoption that the scripture is talking about, the grafting in and the adoption, does not pertain to the pagans. It doesn't pertain to them. And the glory, and the covenants in plural, there it is. What is the covenants, the old covenant and the new covenant, pertain to the Israelites? And the giving of the law was given to the Israelites. And the service of God is the priesthood. There's no Moabite priest or Canaanite priest or Egyptian priest or anybody that thinks they know God and love God so much that they can be a priest. It cannot happen. If you are not of, this, of the Levites, you cannot be a priest. And if you're not of the house of Aaron, you cannot be a high priest on earth, period. But the last thing is the promises. There are the promises again. The promises that you talk about were pertaining to the Israelites. Who are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Yahawashai came, who is over all, Yahweh blessed forever. So let it be. So when we are, when we are in Galatians 3 that we were um, no, just now, and Paul is repeating the promises again. And he's saying that in order for um, the, the Israelites to receive that perfection, in order for them to uh, obtain the promise, that perfection is through faith in Yahweh Shai. Played out first, played out first here, and then fulfilled in the real. All right, and I see some hands, and this is what I'm going to do. Since we've already read the scriptures, and I wanted my readers to read, but since we've already read the scriptures, we're just going to say all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and the Son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. And Heavenly Father, we are asking that you send your spirit today, that you open our minds, that you grant us proper understanding, that you cleanse our souls, that we might receive your truth and grant us eternal salvation is our prayer in the name of Yahweh Shai, our Savior. And for that, let everyone say, so let it be. So let it be. So let it be. So let it be.